Hey guys, let's talk about doing color flats on a comic book page. And I have a sample here where we can work on this together and show the process. All right, so here we go. I borrowed this really nice piece of inked art artwork from Jack Kirby and thought we would use it to practice doing coloring. Now, if you look at the artwork, traditionally comic books are done in a black and white art style first the penciling and inking is done. And you would bring this into your Photoshop, either scan the art or bring it in from another digital file. And you'd set it up like this inside your file where you have a layer that is just the inked artwork. And then you'd have a color layer where you would start separating your colors. And the process here is a little bit like creating a coloring book. We're gonna be coloring inside the lines and separating the artwork into solid areas of color that we can later stylize and add detail highlight and shadow to later on. But uh, this part, part one is going to be to doing the flat color. A um, Couple things we need to do to set it up. If you look at your artwork, the ink layer uh, is solid black and white. And we want this art to merge and blend over the top of our color layer. The easiest way to do that is to select the ink artwork layer and change the blending mode from normal to multiply. And what does that do? Multiply is going to blend the uh, black and white art on any layer that's underneath. And so if we do our coloring underneath, this is an easy way to isolate that color separate from the inked artwork, but then the ink artwork will still blend with the color. <clears throat> All right, um, another thing to pay attention to is uh, we're gonna be using the pencil brush and we're gonna be using the lasso for this. We're not gonna be using a paintbrush in this process. And this can be done with either a mouse or it can be done uh, with uh, a stylus on a Wacom tablet, uh, whatever works best for you. So. Let's try using the, um, the lasso first. So let's say what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in and you know maybe start on his face here. So I'm gonna use my lasso and I'm just gonna draw an outline here of where his face would be. Okay, and so I made a little selection and I missed a little spot so I'm gonna hold shift and kind of loop that one in there. Now notice, I didn't care about being exactly in the same spot. That's what's good about this method. I don't have to be right there, perfectly aligned. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Okay, so I'm on the color layer. Now I wanna pick a color that I'm gonna use for his skin tone. And actually, I don't have any um, presets in here. I'll take a look at my pale swatches now. So I don't have a preset color I wanna use for his skin tone, so I'm gonna make it. So I'm gonna go over to the uh, fill box, double click it, pull up the color picker, and I'm just gonna make a little skin tone right now that I'll use and drop into the art. Now, what's also good about this process is the color I use now does not have to be perfect. It could be a different color later on, but as I build it up over time and I use my specific swatches, um, they can be changed. All right, so got that little fill spot there. I'm gonna switch to my uh, paint bucket and just click and drop. You see that color is now inside the face. Notice, like I said, I'm gonna zoom in closer. It didn't matter that the color wasn't perfectly aligned to the edge of uh, the face mask there or the face cowl opening. Uh, because the black lines, because they're multiplied, it covers that up. So let's uh, do another spot. I'm going to go ahead and lasso, try to lasso his head. So I'm going to switch back to my lasso. This time I'm going to lasso over here. Again. Oop. Wasn't a perfect point there. <laughs> kind of went out. I'm going to go up to my swatch palette and I think there's a pure color. Yeah, I'll use that. Switch to my paint bucket, drop it in. Okay, so now you see 
I have some issues. Wasn't quite right. What I'm gonna do is actually switch to my pencil. And I'm using the pencil for a specific reason. I don't want any aliasing on the edge of my, uh, my lines. I want it to be a, a solid pixel. I don't want it to be a blended line. And the pencil gives me that. It gives me a solid edge when I color. And that's gonna be helpful in the future when we do selections and we mask the areas of color we need. Okay, and the same would be true when I switch to the eraser. Switch to the eraser tool. Uh, I don't wanna use a soft edge on the eraser. I wanna use the solid brush. I'm gonna come here, let me erase the edge. Switch back to my pencil. And fill in the edge. All right, so <clears throat> if I wanna do his ears, I can use my option or alt key, which gives me the eyedropper and I can click on that little spot of his chin and I can color in right here on his ear, do the same thing on this side of his ear. Now you can quickly and easily change the size of your brush by using, or your pencil, by using the bracket keys on your keyboard. And that would be right bracket makes it larger, left bracket makes it smaller. You can zoom in close and get it just right. You can also do here on his eye patch, his eye opening. Kind of paint and color that in. Made a little mistake, so I'm gonna come back in with blue, fix the edge, right? Maybe pick a lighter color for his eyes. Kind of fill that in. Uh, switch to white, do the A symbol. So when I'm doing this kind of coloring, I'm going back and forth between the uh, pencil the lasso, the paint bucket, and the eraser as I start filling in the color as needed. Got a little more white here, so I guess I'll do his, his teeth. Right. And if there's a little spot I need to fix, I can fix it. All right, so you see how I'm starting that. Just like a coloring book, filling in the color. And because I'm using a separate layer, you could see how it's not perfect when you look at it underneath or without the line art, uh, but it doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to be inside the lines. And so I would spend time now going around his entire body, finishing off, uh, coloring in where I need to. Let's say I do another little spot. I'm gonna lasso here, kind of go up over his bicep, back around under his arm here, back across his chest, up, down, around, and watch this. I even looped over the area that I already painted. But watch what happens when I use the uh, paint bucket this time. I'm going to sample that blue color I want. And because I'm coloring on the same layer, and I paint within that selected boundary, notice how it doesn't paint over what I've already painted. That's because the paint bucket detects the edge of the previously colored area and it doesn't fill it in. It fills up to the edge and that's a good little benefit. So I don't have to be perfect in those selections. I just need to get in that area and I can slowly start to build up where I need to fix. And so here I'll kind of zoom in and maybe fix some of these areas that I missed in my original selection. Maybe even fill in an area that wasn't there to begin with. Now, pixel by pixel, you can go in there and, and fix and fill it in. There you go. Just kind of round the corner here. Fix up a couple of these little pixels that are hanging over the edge. Maybe erase a little bit here where I need to fix. Perfect. Good. All right. So maybe 
last but not least, I'm going to go in and do that little star in his chest. Uh, it is possible to paint instead of using the lasso. So let's say I go back to the pencil, I switch to white, and let's say I just paint the edge that I want to fill in with color. As long as those paint areas all connect, when I use the paint bucket, it will fill in uh, the inner portion. So sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll just come along with the pencil, fill in an area, and then because that area is an enclosed space, I can use the paint bucket, drop it in the middle, and fill in the color where it needs to be. All right, so I think you get the idea. That's how I would go around and color the entire picture. And what you want to do is try to pick the color that would be the base color for the character. So I'm not trying to paint dark or light just now, I'm trying to get that base color. So his suit would be kind of a medium royal blue. Uh, I do white and red and skin tones and all that around the entire picture. The shading and the uh, changing of those colors as needed for, for style and for art later on, I'll fix in the shading and highlight process. But I don't, I don't need to do that just now. But I'm going to go ahead and skip to the background so you can kind of see how I might do the background. I'm going to zoom out, set up, uh, set up the whole picture here. You can kind of see that I've got my uh, picture centered. By the way, I just did something that I probably didn't mention yet. Um, I actually tilted and rotated the picture a little bit. That's possible using the R key on your keyboard. The R key brings up the rotate tool. And if you're using a stylus or you're using even your mouse and you need to like move your hand motion, you wanna change the direction of the picture while you're working, you press that R key and you just dial that picture back and forth. It's, that's the rotate. Very helpful when you're trying to draw on a screen um, on a separate tablet. You know, naturally when we draw on paper or something, we tilt our arms, we tilt the drawing board can't really do that. So use the R key to do that. But if you need to recenter the art back to normal, straight up and straight down, double click that rotate tool and it restores. Okay, I mentioned the background. I just want to use a nice solid color and I might even want to use a gradient in the background. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer over on my layer palette. And I'm going to call this thing background. All right, now let's pick a couple bright colors. What do you feel would be a good background color? Maybe kind of a bold, um, you know, reddish, warmish color. So I'm just gonna go ahead and look and see what my presets are here. Um, look at like pale, don't really like those colors. I'm gonna go back to my uh, fill box and click on that color picker. And I think I'm going to make the foreground kind of a darkish purplish color. In the background, I'm going to make a much lighter, you know, pinkish color, maybe like that. So I have a foreground from purple to light pink. All right. Now I'm going to change tools. I'm going to go from the paint bucket to the gradient tool. And when I switch to the gradient tool up on top, you can see there's a little gradient selector. I'm gonna highlight basics and open expand that. And you can see that you have a choice here. You can go from purple to transparent or purple to pink. I want that purple to pink. Then I come over here with my gradient tool and I just click from the top and drag down to the bottom. And it fills in the gradient, it has a nice smooth transition. If I don't like that, maybe I can go back and adjust the color. Like maybe I want that to be a little bit brighter. I'll just redo the gradient right on top. There we go. Now notice that background layer appeared uh, above the color layer that I'd been painting on. I just need to reposition that. I need to drag it down below the color layer. So now you can see it appearing beneath um, Captain America. So you just want to pay attention when you're coloring like this, which layer you're working on. You want to make sure the background separate from the foreground elements. 
Um, you might even separate your characters. Like I might do a Captain America color layer, and then I might add a new blank layer and do the Nazis. Uh, I might do the planes separately. That's another way to go. Or some folks, they just do it all on one color layer as they go and they fix it and revise it. Um, sometimes to do really interesting special effects, it's preferable to have your characters colored separately. So they have a flat color layer that you can then separate from the others. There are also some other fancier things you can do like recoloring the ink and, and things like that. Um, but that we'll get into in the, the next video. So using this method, just slowly go around the picture, color in the, the pieces and fill it out. Come back next time and I'll show you how to then add shading and highlights uh, to your picture. All right, so thanks for listening. See you next time.